It's been a couple of months now since uh, Soccer Jock 1111 challenged me to explain why the Big Bang Theory philosophically defeats the theory of intelligent design. He said he'd get back to me after I responded, but I'm still waiting. I had a few BMs back and forth with him. He seems like a nice guy, so I don't want to say that he chickened out, but I'm done waiting and um, I want to finish this. Fortunately, Answer Questions 1 left a comment on my video that makes this very easy. He says, and I paraphrase, the Big Bang Theory predicts, 1. A decelerated expansion. We see the opposite. 2. Equal amounts of matter and antimatter. We see a lot more matter. 3. A messy universe. We see a finely tuned one. Okay, I don't understand how those are opposites, but whatever, let's just go with it. He says that this fine-tuning is testable and verifiable, and that's evidence of intelligent design. In conclusion, he states that the Big Bang Theory has very weak predictive power. Okay, let's do this. The expansion rate. The Big Bang Theory does not predict a decelerated expansion. You're getting things confused here. The Big Bang Theory simply says that the universe began in a hot, dense state and is undergoing a metric expansion, meaning that it's space itself that is expanding. Two immovable objects would appear to move away from each other, despite being immovable, because the space in between them is expanding. At some point in the distant past, this means everything in the universe would have been packed so densely that temperature and density would approach infinity. And at that point the general theory of relativity breaks down, just as it does in the singularity of a black hole. Time loses all meaning then, and uh, for this reason it makes sense to think of the beginning of the expansion as the beginning of the universe, at, at least the universe as we think of it. What will happen to the universe in the future isn't really addressed by the original Big Bang Theory. Yeah, Given the knowledge available at the time and the mathematical equations that govern this stuff, it follows that the outward pressure of matter and energy will decrease as the universe expands, meaning that gravity will win out in the end and cause the universe to slow down and eventually collapse. Now, fairly recent discoveries do show that indeed the expansion is accelerating. But this doesn't contradict the Big Bang Theory. The equations of the original Big Bang Theory actually allow for this, but since there was no known mechanism that could explain the solutions in terms of physics, they were not really taken seriously. When the acceleration was discovered in the late 90s, particle physicists already knew that vacuum is actually a quantum soup of virtual particles and uh, they also provide outward pressure, just like matter and radiation. And since adding more vacuum won't affect the density of the vacuum in the universe, I mean, increasing the volume simply means adding more vacuum, and that means more quantum soup. That means the universe will expand forever at an exponential rate. Now, if you find it hard to believe that vacuum is really a soup of quantum weirdness, look up the Casimir effect. There you'll find the experimental evidence. Now, matter and antimatter asymmetry. The Big Bang Theory deals with the expansion of space. It doesn't actually address why the universe contains what it contains. In fact, if matter and antimatter never formed, the Big Bang Theory would look exactly as it does today. Uh, overlooking the little problem, of course, that no one would be around to come up with it. There is no known explanation for why this CP symmetry, charge parity symmetry, has been violated. Either the universe has always been asymmetric in this regard, or some unknown process that has been named baryogenesis must have occurred. It's possible that theories currently under development, grand unified theories, will be able to explain this process, but for now we simply don't know. 
not knowing how this happened in no way contradicts the Big Bang Theory, which simply says that the universe is expanding from an initial hot, dense state. You know, the funny thing is, if the explanation is that an invisible wizard caused the symmetry violation using magic, even that wouldn't disprove the Big Bang Theory. Again, we still have every reason to believe that the universe started out in a hot, dense state. And we know it's expanding. Fine-tuning! The Big Bang Theory doesn't make predictions about how messy or orderly the universe will be. It simply says that it expanded from an initial hot, dense state. Besides, have you actually looked at the universe? I'd say it's pretty damn messy. <laughs> And uh, if by finally tuned you mean finally tuned for life, then look again to our knowledge the entire universe except for parts of the surface of a tiny little insignificant planet is completely hostile to life as we know it. But anyway, just how is fine-tuning testable and falsifiable? That's something I'd really like an answer to, because the only thing I keep hearing is X is this way, and if it were any other way, it would be different. So, therefore, an intelligent agent made it this way on purpose. Showing that X is the way it is doesn't show that it's been made that way by an intelligence. That's a non sequitur. But I'll go even further and point out that a universe where the laws of nature allow for life to exist is the only kind of universe where life could appear without a designer. Hereafter referred to as a god, since that's what you guys mean. The fact that we live in a universe that doesn't need a god is evidence that god exists? That's stupid. Finally, to infer fine-tuning from the odds of the laws and fundamental constants of the universe being what they are, you need to be able to demonstrate that they could be different, and that this particular configuration is indeed improbable. Can you? Because last time I checked, we only knew of one universe, and it is the way it is. You can't draw statistical conclusions from a sample of one. Compare it to a lottery. We know of one lottery ticket, the winning one. Now, we don't know that there are other tickets. Of course, you could say that it's possible for every configuration to exist. In other words, an infinite number of lottery tickets. Fine, there's no reason to believe that only one universe exists. We only know of one, but we know of no reason why there can't be others. But then the anthropic principle says that we must exist in a universe that allows us to exist. This would be analogous to having bought all the lottery tickets. A third option is that there's a constraint of some sort. There can only be so many universes. Maybe one, maybe ten, whatever. But every configuration is still possible. This would be analogous to having a fair lottery where there's an infinite number of tickets, but we can only buy so many. Now, how would you demonstrate that there is such a constraint? When it comes to predictions made by the Big Bang Theory, when you say it has weak predictive power, you simply don't know what you're talking about. The Big Bang Theory predicted the existence of the cosmic microwave background radiation, the abundance of light elements in the universe, and the uniform distribution of matter at large scales, before these facts were known. To this day, no other theory explains these observable facts, or the expansion of space for that matter. See ya.